let's revise oscillations experiments. So we're going to start off with a setup that will allow us to investigate simple harmonic motion in springs. First of all, we have a stand and this stand has been attached uh, with a G clamp to a desk. We have a spring of spring constant K. We have a mass, let's call that M. And uh, we have a ruler behind it that will serve as a marker. Now, how can we investigate oscillations with this setup? First of all, we're going to lift the mass from that fixed point, and then we're going to release it to perform simple harmonic oscillations. We could measure the time period t, and this is really important because any time in oscillations when we have to investigate timing, chances are the time period will be smaller, uh, that will be quite small for us to measure directly. So what we do is we measure 10 time periods to reduce the percentage uncertainty, and then finally we divide our answer by 10. Now there are a few things that we could um, investigate. For instance, we could vary the initial amplitude and we're going to measure the time period. This will show us that the time period in the simple harmonic motion is independent of the amplitude. Here's something really important. Uh, if the question is about amplitude and time period in pendulums, this is only true for small angles. How would I define a small angle? Let's say it will be less than 10 degrees, I would say. Uh, if that's the case, it's pretty safe that it will be showing some simple harmonic motion. We could also vary the mass and measure the time period t as well. Now, if that's the case, they could ask us to investigate an equation. This could be a completely unknown equation, maybe some sort of a suggestion, see if it's true or something else. Now, an equation which is not on the spec, but it sometimes appears in practical questions and it's given in practical questions is t is equal to 2 pi over the square root of m over k. Now, in order to investigate this, we could measure the uh, time period T and um, by ver we could vary the mass and measure the time period. So if that's the case, we could plot a graph of T squared. Let's just zoom out and then go over this properly. Um, we could plot a graph of T squared against m. Now, why is it t squared? Well, look at that. This is square rooted and will not get a linear relationship if we just plot t against the square root of m. Once we square everything, we get that t squared will be equal to 4 pi squared m over k. Let's compare this to y is equal to mx plus c. Well, if t squared is on the y-axis, if the mass m is on the x-axis, this means that our gradient will be 4 pi squared divided by k. We could find the gradient by drawing a line of best fit, and after we do that, we could rearrange for the gradient, which would just be 4 pi squared divided by the gradient to figure out our spring constant k. So we could also investigate simple harmonic motion with a pendulum. Imagine that we have a little pendulum or a little string or a little mass attached to it, effectively a pendulum. The length is L. And then we also have a protractor across here. We could um, ensure that the angle is less than 10 degrees. Remember, we don't actually get simple harmonic motion if the angle is larger than 10 degrees. Then we're going to release that from that set angle. We're going to be measuring the time for a set number of oscillations. Example 10 or 20, and then we're going to be dividing by that number, very similar to the previous question. What we're going to do is we're going to vary the length and then measure the time period. There's an equation which is not actually on the spec, that t is 2 pi square root of L over g. The previous equation for uh, the spring as well was also not on the spec, but they would typically be given if that comes up in an exam question. So we're going to plot a graph of t squared against L in order to ensure a linear relationship, and our gradient will be equal to 4 pi squared 
over g. Then we could use that to determine, well, the gravitational acceleration, and that would be 4 pi squared divided by the gradient of the graph. As always, we're going to ensure that all of our readings are done at eye level, we're going to release the pendulum from a set angle, we're going to measure multiple oscillations to reduce our percentage uncertainty. Let's have a look at one more experiment involving a pendulum. So in this case, we're going to measure the height h above the balance point. When we release the pendulum at that point, because it's not moving, it will only have some gravitational potential energy. And all of that will be transferred to kinetic energy. We could measure h with a ruler, and then we could measure v using light gates, or perhaps some, some method with a, with a high-speed camera from a phone. Um, but the idea is that because mgh is equal to a half mv squared, we can say that the v squared is going to equal to 2gh. We could vary the height h, so we can say vary h, and we could measure v. After that, we're going to plot a graph of v squared against the height h and this graph should be a should be a straight line through the origin will be a linear relationship we could calculate the gradient of this graph and the gradient uh, let's not call it m i'm just going to call it uh, grad i've changed that so the gradient will just be equal to 2g meaning that the gravitational acceleration will be equal to the gradient divided by 2. now how do we do this experiment accurately first of all the angle has to be smaller than 10 degrees in order to uh, ensure that this is actually performing simple harmonic motion so theta must be less than 10 degrees and uh, additionally we'll take multiple readings and then we're going to be averaging okay we're going to revise one more and that is how to find the resonance frequency we always find the resonance frequency by using a frequency generator this is also known as a signal generator by the way we're going to vary the driving frequency until it matches the natural frequency the uh, frequency generator could be connected to any object i just have a combination of some springs over here which will oscillate safely for instance but it could literally be many many other objects now at this point the resonance will occur and the amplitude will be at a maximum when the frequency matches the natural frequency the graph that you would expect actually remember looks something like this if this here is the amplitude and this here is the driving frequency see um, it will kind of look like this and this point here where the peak is is actually your um, natural frequency which is also the um, in this case is matched by the driving frequency <clears throat> excuse me um, if we get uh, some damping into the system what will happen is that the amplitude will drop at all points and also the peak will get shifted a little bit to the left like that so this here is with damping Okay, folks, so remember, these were just some experiments to revise, and there could be a whole bunch of um, experiments and experimental situations. If you've not had a look yet, have a look at a very similar video which I made um, for waves, and this video is just over here.